Good morning. Okay, bye. Let me, I will hold it so that I can be. Good morning, everyone. My name is Akishola Latunji. I'm an agriculturist. On the state of the nation, number one, you as an individual, what are you doing for Nigeria? I'm not a politician, but I will not hesitate from telling you the fact. There is this added in your which says, Ile Lati Kesho Rode, Esho Konsi Goro, Ile Lati Makowa. Now, we are talking about the security issue, which has been hanging like an abatros for so many years. It does not start with the administration of Tinubu. It's been there for a long time. Now, as a father, as a mother, the first thing you need to do is to, number one, tell your children to have good culture. When your son, your daughter, have that, when the good culture has been imbibed from the home, then the nation will be stabilized. You know, if you are well cultured, when you get outside, you behave well. When you get outside, you do good things. And when you are put in a, in an administrative uh, administrative position, you perform good because of your father's name. Not your mentee, won't she? So you will remember the name of your father. You will not want to spoil the name of your father. Now, we are now saying uh, the country is not good. Nigeria is not good. Why will Nigeria be good? Why will Nigeria be better? Because most parents, you hear them, they will tell you, Ajani, Choribo Shenlo, Kiwono Badebe, Koko Woje. The English of what I've said now is, Ajani, you see how things is going. When you get there, you too be corrupt, siphon money, take public funds. When all these things are not well checked from home, then corruption will continue. Then about the issue of Biafra. Now, let me tell you something. If if Biafra, if Biafra should uh, uh, the Igbos to start the Biafra nation, number one, there will be instability in the north. Or no, there will be instability in the west, and there will be instability in the east. See, I have four brothers. Two of my brothers are married to the Igbos. I'm, uh, I'm an in-law to the Igbo. We are married from Enugu State, and we are, we are married from Imo State. So I'm an in-law in in to them, and I will not want my in-laws to suffer, because if they suffer, it will affect us. It will affect everything. Igbos, Yoruba, and Awusa, they will be intermingling economically. They will be intermingling maritally. They will be intermingling in no aspect of life. What are we now talking about? We now see some corrupt entity in the East saying they want the Afra nation. Now, if the Afra nation should be established, number one, there will be marginalization among the egos. Along, I will be able to live in the East. And I know some, I would mention, I know some uh, clans in Igbo, in Igbo land that that uh, do oppress other Igbo, land, Igbo people. You see this this side, they say our own this thing is uh, superior to their own this thing. Let now assume that Igbo people should now go. The oppression will best start in the Igbo land. Then there will be war in Igbo land. There will be open abele. Eh? The open abele, I will call it, let me use this local local English, riots, but there will be war. So what we need to do is number one, let's go to let's go back home. Let our parents, let our brothers, our sisters, uh, our children, let them first have that only culture. Let's forget about religion. Religious leaders, they are them most of them they normally they will uh, they will program you according to what they want. Not forget our rabbi religion, not but not for the north. The north are keenly uh, attached to religion, and they make their decisions based on their religious, uh, of course, uh, understanding and beliefs. So you can't ask them to forget about religion, and uh, they adhere to you. Some are pushing for Islamic states. 
just like some communities and local governments have been taken over by the Islamic State of West African province, a world terror group. Yeah, you see, when we are talking about religion, it's not that I I, I want us to forget about religion like that. I just what I uh, wanted to to say there is to to put religion apart, the phrase reality. Now, we are not talking about uh, the North, the terrorist group. Anyone can become a terrorist, and anyone can form his or her group uh, based, based on selfish interests. So I can't say that this group is the one that has taken over the uh, uh, certain local government in the North. So when it comes to terrorism, uh, terrorism is from the minds. If you have a good heart, you won't become a terrorist. Let me tell you something. Terrorism don't, don't just start from, from now. It starts from when they were, were small. Number one, when you have little children in the community, then you now see one of them trying to bully others and then they're trying to do bad things, trying to oppress other things. Okay, but either because one has not given him or her uh, maybe sweet biscuit and other things. Now, he's now using that one to oppress them, fighting them, bullying them. That is this uh, genesis of becoming a terrorist when the person gets old or when the person grows up. So that is it, sir. Now, we are saying that if evil divides, there will be an internal war within them. But uh, uh, is it better being within one Nigeria that is stuck in the wheel of motionless and despair. People are killing, are dying today. Hunger is ravaging the country and the youth, the younger ones have given up in Nigeria. So isn't it better for the Igbos and the Biafans to go and manage their own problem, which is local, and uh, just find a way to resolve their security crisis? The remaining in Nigeria that is, of course, uh, without any direction and uh, any vision for the masses, especially the youth. You see, thank you for that. Uh, this, this, this man is... Yeah, thank you for the question, sir. See, when we are talking about the issue of food and insecurity in Nigeria, see, like, as I am, I'm a farmer. I have my own farm. I have my farm in Oshun State. I'm contributing my quota to providing food for the masses to Nigeria, to the nation and for Africa at large. See, uh, the first thing about the mass hunger, the mass hunger we have in Nigeria now is because most people don't want to farm. Most people don't want to farm. We have lands there. There is land from here to Abekuta. But now, sorry, I will, I will still go back to what I've said. Uh, let me pinpoint it. This. From here to Abekuta, 80% of the land have been either acquired by the religionists or uh, the, uh, the, what are we now calling it? the developers so and then uh, there, there is the encouragement about uh, going into agriculture is low then you see our 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 leaders most especially let me go back to this our religious leaders are not happy issues they will tell you have it have it have it yes we are having the faith but work 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 they won't advise you to work they will just say on Monday you go to church, Tuesday there will be another church, at Wednesday church, Thursday, even in the morning. What are we not talking about? Mondays to Sundays, every morning, most times, most workable times, we will be having church programs. So, where will, when will the individual have time to either work for himself or herself? Then, another thing, not only church, you must, must start doing that too. I'm an Agege boy. I grew up in Agege. I know much about Islam and Christianity. So, 
when it comes to the to Quranic uh, recitation and part at that and uh, Bible. Uh -huh. So forget about that. But our religious leaders are not helping issues. Let our religious leaders, the Muslims, the Christians, the Babalawo, the Onishesheis, let them advise everyone in their Ijo. What I mean by Ijo is their congregation that please start going into farming. We have the lands there. Then if we now have much people in farming, then there won't be hunger in the land. Now this is says that 60% of Nigerians, over 60% of Nigerians are into agriculture. But according to US statistics, less than 4% is into agriculture, but they are feeding the world. Compared, in contrast with the 60% in Nigeria, but the issue is that the approach to that agriculture, is there any, are you into mechanized farming? How many tons of maize can you produce? In three months, as you said, you are contributing your own quota. That could be subsistence. Maybe you are trying to manage it within your own resources. Do you have mechanized farming? That is another issue. Yeah. Let me tell you something. The 60% is a black and fly. We have our forum. We, have, we just, uh, last month, we just uh, had uh, an agricultural uh, program here at Alausa. We know each other. Who told you that the number of farmers in Nigeria is 60 percent? That is a blatant lie. We know ourselves. When you come to, I can invite you to my farm. I don't have. I'm not into my canine farming, but I have my only shodu. Only shodu are people who will work for a year. They work for a year. Then, at the end of the year, I pay them. So we have an agreement. So when it is December, they go back. They will go back to where they come from. Then I'll say to them. So that is it.